Hello everyone, it's Caitlin and today we are going back through the closet of costume to fix up another gown. So we are back in the closet of costume to work on another gown. So I was starting this way. I was starting this way, but I don't feel like I keep want to keep going that way. So I think we're gonna work on this dress today. I'm just going to randomly pick out a dress that I feel like working on and then we'll work from there. So let's pull this out. I kind of called this the watermelon dress because it's pink and it didn't really remind me of watermelon so much, but it was sold when I bought the fabric like three years ago, it was, it's, the color was stated as watermelon pink. So I think watermelon just kind of got stuck in my head. And I really, really like watermelon, so it kind of, you know, it works. But it's a really pretty light coral pink. It's not a color I would pick for myself, except for the fact that solid colored silk taffetas do not go for, on sale very often. This was $8 a yard. Um, and rarely do you see solid colors going or less than $15 a yard so I picked what I could get and yeah um, it's never been my favorite but in making it I, I did so it kind of set in the stash for a really long time because it was not my favorite color but I finally did make it up um, I had a plan for making it up and then I've kind of decided I don't really like that plan so it's kind of just been here um, I only wore the skirt once and I wore it with a um, sheer white cotton um, bodice and a silk and a black silk jacket. Um, I think I wore that for Wellborn a couple years ago. And then I also made the evening bodice go with it. It's really more of a ball bodice. Um, but I've never actually worn it. So we'll see what we need to do today. Hey look, there's actually boning in this one. I didn't bone the second dart, but I'm thinking it's probably not worth it, so I think we're good. Um, I do need, because this is a ball gown, I need a tucker, which is kind of like a little bit of lace almost that goes around the edge. It makes the top fit better. It, um, it, it, wor it works almost as a collar, so it may be worn a couple times and then discarded really, and then you make another one. Um, and I also need under sleeves for this and a handkerchief. And then I need a Bertha, which is also kind of like a collar, but it isn't, it's the pretty part of the collar. So a tucker is like the practical, don't let the dress touch your body so it doesn't get disgusting with the sweat and the oils and that sort of thing. And then the Bertha is the pretty bit. And then I have plenty of fabric, I need to make a day bodice. And I have a plan for that because there's a painting it's a little bit later than this dress. I'd really wear this from like 1862 to 1864. And, well, 1863 to 1864. And the painting I am wanting it shows it as is 1865. So we're going to make some changes, but I just love that painting. So we're going to kind of copy the elements from that. And of course, that day box is going to need collar, under sleeves. We already had the handkerchief done. Other thing that I need, I don't think I put a watch pocket into this. Hey, I did. Cool, there's a watch pocket. But I do need to fix this pocket because it's fashion fabric and it shouldn't be fashion fabric. It should be lining fabric. So yeah, I think we're going to start with fixing this pocket. And... We got skirt lifters. Hey, we have skirt lifters too. Cool. So I was doing pretty good. Alright, I think we're going to start with maybe cutting out the day bodice and stitching that together and then we can work on all the accessories at once once I figure out what we're doing. Let's get to cutting. So I have here my bodice pieces and my sleeve pieces. So all these are pieces, are, most of these are pattern pieces that I created myself um, many many years ago <laughs> when I was not nearly the size I was I am now. So um, they've been, you know, nicked and tucked and um, expanded in certain ways. So I have my bodice back here and my bodice front and then I have my coat sleeve, my smallest coat sleeve. So we're going to cut these out of silk and also out of polished cotton for the lining. And I'm also really hoping to have enough silk to recover a parasol because there's this parasol that came to me from the 1840s that doesn't have its original cover and there's a 
fashion plate of an 1840s pink parasol and I absolutely love it and so I'm really hoping I have enough silk that way I don't have to purchase anymore. We shall see. If you're new to the channel, this is a pocket pattern that I drafted um, that I took from an original of mine um, and it is available free on my blog and you are welcome to it. I'll post a link to the description below. I think I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger than um, the actual um, pattern because I like bigger pockets. We're going to keep the same shape. And I am trying to conserve silk, so I'm going to try to cut some bias piping out of this. A lot of people don't like bias because they feel that it's wasteful. It isn't. One square inch of fabric is one square inch of fabric, no matter which way or what direction you cut it. Um, it's all the same amount of fabric. And it's really easy to get bias from teeny tiny scraps like this. Um, I've cut bias from scraps even as small as this if I've had to. So it really isn't a problem with the amount of fabric you have. It's just knowing how to use it. And it's really good to use all these scraps for this sort of thing. I'm betting that may be enough. So um, I have plenty of excess here if I need to. But I think we can go ahead and start sewing some pieces together. So I think we're at the point where I'm going to go do a whole bunch of handwork. So I have the sleeve sewn together and I have the facing on there, so I'm just going to hand tack that facing in on all the sleeves. Um, I put boning in the darts and then put piping on the neckline and the waistband. And so I need to go tack that down. And then I also put piping in the arm side. I'm just going to base that in. And then I'm also going to do hooks and eyes um, on the front and um, probably go ahead and put buttons on. So I have these absolutely precious little um, antique buttons that I got from the Button Baron. And I think we're going to use that on this. So the photograph shows, or the painting shows, um, black buttons. These have a little gold highlight in them, a little flower. Um, but yeah, so I think we're going to work on... Um, and I thought about doing covered black velvet buttons, but you just might as well go ahead and put those in. I'm not going to do buttonholes. We're going to do hooks and eyes. And then decorative buttons, which is a perfectly period solution. So yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and do that and I'll come back whenever all my handwork is done. All right, so we have a bodice put together. Um, looks pretty good. So I have all the piping put in on the neckline, waistline, and the sleeve. It has hooks and eyes all done up. I took a good close look at the original. I have the hooks and eyes up the bodice um, to kind of see how to put the thing together making sure I was doing it right, and then I put buttons over the top. Um, I took a really good look at the painting um, that we're kind of using as inspiration since we're not copying it since it's an 1865 dress. But um, clearly there was a space up here where the buttons didn't go, um, and that's just for brooch. My original black silk bodice does the same thing as buttons stop earlier so you can fit a brooch. And I kind of stopped them here as well, um, just because for a belt it's going to be easier um, than um, having it have to go over a very thick button like this. And the belt we're going to make for this bodice that goes with the original, um, with, that goes with the painting, probably um, will fit over this one. But um, just in case I ever didn't want to use that belt, if I wanted to use a plain belt, um, this would still work. So I opted to stick it to put this one on. I do have two extra buttons, um, which I'm thinking we might use to close some undersleeves. Um, figure that'd be useful. But I think the only thing we have left to do is to input the sleeves, and then we can work on collar, cuff, handkerchiefs, belt, and then think about the evening bodice at that point. So let's go ahead and put these sleeves in. I gotta remember exactly 
how to put these in. Okay, so we have a day bodice uh, that is basically completely done. So I'm going to continue to embroider the collar, handkerchief, and cuffs. And whenever that's done, we'll come back and attach them. It's going to take me a little bit. Um, what I'm doing is, so the original painting showed black trim around the neckline and a stand-up collar, which is very 1865. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a normal um, down collar, what I would consider a normal collar. And um, but we're going to do some black embroidery on it in silk. So there is a Godey's, it talks about a collar that is um, embroidered with black wow. silk. You can't do it in, in um, black cotton because black cotton was not color fast then. And so it needs to be silk. I got the collar and cuffs embroidered, so now it is time to go ahead and stitch them on. The collar ended up being a bit big um, because when I had first made it, I just planned on the embroidery. I didn't plan on adding the lace, and the lace ended up adding like three quarters of an inch to it, so ended up a bit too wide. I just didn't think about it until after I'd done the embroidery, but it still fits on um, pretty well. It's just going to meet, which is fine. It's not ideal, but it's fine. And of course, collars weren't put on permanently. They were really just tacked in, and then when they got dirty, you would just take them out and wash them without having to wash the entire dress. And my understanding for undersleeves is that there are several ways to get them into your dress. You could use, um, from my understanding, a thread elastic, so not like quarter inch elastic, not half inch elastic, but like thread elastic um, could be used and you just put them on and they wouldn't be attached inside your dress. You could also stitch them kind of all the way around like I do, or um, just tack them just a few places, which I sometimes do as well. So that finishes out the day bodice, which means we have that completely done. So I think what we're going to do is pull out the skirt and fix that pocket that we talked about earlier. So here we have our lovely skirt. So go in here and find the pocket. There's my opening, and we're just going to pin this in. One side is in. Alright, there's a pocket in the dress now. I'm going to turn this inside out. And it hides itself nicely in a fold. So there's the pocket. You don't usually see it because it's in nice little tuck. So, skirt's complete, which is nice. So now we have a day bodice and a skirt done. So let's go ahead and get this evening bodice out and work with that. I pinned in some lace. So I'm going to go ahead and just stitch that in because it does need some sort of lacy bits underneath there. This is um, original Maltese lace that I found. Um, it was on a Bertha that I kind of used in previous years, it kind of went with all my ball dresses, and I would just, I had a Bertha, and that was it. Um, but I've taken that one apart because it no longer fits, and I'm repurposing the antique lace. And so we're also going to finish out a Bertha with it, but I had enough for undersleeves as well. I'm also looking at the bodice itself, and it's a little high for a ball gown, so I think we're going to cut out maybe from shoulder to shoulder. And I think it needs to be about an inch lower, so we're just going to take it out and make it a little lower. I cut this out. I'm hoping I don't have to add any more to it. Instead, it'll just stretch to fit. I shall go stitch that up and then probably tack it down and do the undersleeves at the same time and then we can talk about the Bertha. Alright, step one with the Bertha. Um, 
it's been many years since I've made a Bertha because I don't actually usually attend balls. Like I haven't had the opportunity to make one. I figure just in case there does something, something does come up, it'd be nice to have a ball gown, which is why I'm making this now. So I, th I know I needed to close at the shoulder seam, and so I think I'm going to do, put it up pretty high, and I'm going to pin this down because I need it to match the neckline. I'm bedding it well, okay. So I'm going to mark where this is. And I won't need to add a seam allowance to this top because I'm going to bind the edge. And then there's where my center front is. Kind of just dip down. Okay, so I have with me the old Bertha, which doesn't quite fit, but I just need to make sure to measure. Because this is how long I want it to be. And we're kind of basically doing this Bertha again. It's just, it just doesn't fit the neckline of the gown we're using now, which is why I'm redoing it. But I'm going to use the same lace. This is the same um, lace we saw on the undersleeves. It's just the insertion part. I'm going to do a silk taffeta back. Um, this one has organdy, but I don't have any organdy, so we're going to do that. We're going to do more puffings of organza, and then we're going to um, do the gray, little gray bits in half of the, the same silk taffeta of the dress and then we're going to overlay the search on top of it and then bind both sides but because this lace is already cut I need to make sure that they're all the exact same length from top to bottom so roughly really two and a quarter, two and a quarter, yes, okay, so two and, every two and a quarter inches I need to run a seam to gather this. Alright, so I have all sorts of marks on my organza. I'm going to go and stitch all this up by hand. Um, That's five inches, and two would be ten. Let's go for nine. So I want this to end up right here, more or less. Let's see how that looks. Okay, let's try this one. Kind of match the loosiness of the first one we did. Alright, I think this is looking pretty good. So the ribbon will kind of hang over it like that. I think that looks pretty good. Alright, so it's all stitched on. I end up, I am going to have to add a little bit more to this. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. I think I'm going to use like this excess here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of it off. Even with taffeta, I took out one of the seams just so I can get this seam directly in the middle of a lacy bit. That way you can't see it from the outside. It doesn't look like there's a seam. Figured that would be the best thing to do. I'm going to stitch this up. Probably go ahead and put in um, whatever else I need as far as um, sharing bits. And then... Um, I'll come back and we'll cut this together. That got fixed, so we can go ahead and cut off all this excess. So now we have a frou-frou little white Bertha. I think our next step is going to be to cut the strips that are going to go in the middle. The insertion is a little over half an inch wide, so I'll probably cut 
the strips about two inches and I can fold them over once and twice and then put the lace on top. I think that's going to be our best. I think that's going to be the best bet. Alright, here is a nearly completed Bertha. Um, I just finished that very quickly like we had done. Cut some bias and stitched it on. I do need to stitch it on the back. So once that's done, all we need to do is put the lace on the bottom and figure out some sort of closure for this thing. Alright, I have a partially completed Bertha. So there's the front side with all the pretty lace. And I think we're about ready to put on the lace bits. I went ahead and ran a running stitch through it. That way at least it was ready to go. I burnt this 42 inches long so I put a mark 21 inches. Let me get this somewhat even. That's what it's going to look like from the front. It looks appropriately, really, maybe a bit too much. But it is antique lace, and I really prefer not to cut antique lace any more than I have to. So I think we're going to go ahead and leave it. Um, that way it can stay in the longest piece possible. Alright, now comes the fun part of sewing this on and not making it visible from the top side. So this should be an interesting... This should be interesting. While I'm at it, I think I'm going to go ahead and add in the hooks and eyes. I think I'm just going to put three, and I'll probably put the hooks on this side and the eyes on this side, and let's get right over just like that. Alright, we have a beautiful finished Bertha. And so I think we can go ahead and pin it onto the bodice, where I can then sew it on. So it closes over the left shoulder. I think it might be easier to match it from the center. only going to be able to stitch it there because there's the center back right here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stitch what I can and then we'll come back and work on the tucker. Alright, very last step is to make the tucker. And a tucker functions very much like a collar would for a day bodice. It's just a little piece of scrap pretty um, to kind of shadow in the neckline. Um, it has a bit of ribbon usually through it that will kind of snug everything up nice and tight. Um, and it's meant to be worn a few times and then taken out and discarded. So I have some netting here. It's not quite as fine as I would usually use, but it's what I have. And it's going to get covered up with lace anyway. So I think it'll work. Mine's going to end up being, I need it to be about finished in, of an inch wide. So I'm going to fold this one in half. I'm going to cut it two inches. This is the lace I have that's going to be part of the tucker. So this is going to get stitched down here. And then I have a nice pretty little edging that's going to go on the very top. So I'm going to go ahead and iron this and we'll talk about how we're going to put it together. Alright, so I have my netting folded in half and I have my lace. I'm just putting it on um, the very finished edge. I'm going to sew it in with a very fine running stitch and try to be as invisible as possible. Um, I'm going to sew it on the top and the bottom. I'm just going to sew the bottom first and then I will attach the little edging at the same time I sew the top in.
we are on the very last step. So we just need to put some ribbon into the lace. I have here some pink silk ribbon. It's not the exact shade of the dress, but it's pink. It was that or black is all I had. I may, I may go back and order some maybe in white later on. There's a finished ball gown bodice. I think we can go ahead and try one of these bodices on. I'll put the other on the dress form and kind of see how they fit. All right, and here's the day bodice. It's a little tight up in here, but I did just eat, so I think if I put it on like first thing in the morning before I pat anything, like I usually do, then it should be fine. So I'm not really concerned about it. Um, I did put on some jewelry. I had on this earlier, but um. My little wheat cross earrings from Beth Miller Hall, and I also have a brooch by her that matches. And I actually found the belt um, that is actually wheat too. I uh, bought it at a separate time, also from Beth Miller Hall. So, got my little belt buckle here, and just a black little belt. I think eventually we are going to do the little pointed belt that we saw in the painting, but um, because those th because those do show up um, earlier than 1865, so it's it'll work just fine with this dress. But I think for right now, we're gonna call this project done because the dress itself is done. And then we'll um, make the belt when we have, you know, time for accessories. I think when I wear it, I'll probably wear the green bonnet. I thought this would work really well with the pink. Um, but cause I, I didn't realize before today when I was wearing a pink dress, because I don't really like to wear pink and red together. I just don't think they look good together. Um, how many of my 1860s bonnets that are early are have red in them? <laughs> Which is strange because I'm not really a red person. But uh, this one I think will look quite nice. I do have another one that's fully straw that's printed out in purple. So I think that one would work with, as well. So I think I might wait a little bit um, after some food is like isn't it digested a little bit and we might see if I can get on this bodice. Um, should be interesting. I did manage to get into the 1840s one that closed at the back. So. Maybe. I guess we'll see. Alright, so here we are. Um, with a partially put on ball bodice. I can't reach back there. I could put on the 1840s dress, but apparently not my 1860s ball gown. So, it is what it is. Um, so it's like quite gaping at the neck right now. and Because um, I can't reach back there to tie anything. And you can kind of see my chemise. But, okay, so it's on. If it it's kind of just showing everybody what it looks like. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. I think it turned out very cute. I'm not a huge fan of pink, but I think there's enough white at the Bertha that actually I think it works really well. Um, I wasn't thinking I was going to put this one on, so I had my hair in just a bun, but um, so I was going to try this one anyway. And so, yeah, I have a functional ball gown now. Don't know when I'm going to get to wear it, but um, at least there's something in the wardrobe that way if something comes up. So, yeah. But thank you so much for joining me, and I had a lot of fun making up, um, fixing up another gown, and I hope you'll join me again for when we perhaps make another gown.